Okay, this particular build, it's over four meters. It's 4.1, I believe it is. So we're gonna use flitch beams on this build because the roof is too big for the timber sizes we're using. So we're gonna increase the strength of the timber by using flitch beams. Also, we put a bit of soundproofing in this wall because he's going to use it as like, um, he's a DJ I believe, so he's going to use it as kind of like a music studio. So the build up of the wall basically is the normal 50 mil insulation we've, we've put into the wall there, we've pushed that back. And then this 50 mil sound block, which is deeper than the timber frame, because obviously the timber frame is 4 by 2 So what we've done, we've made the frame deeper by using some roofing battens. The reason why we've OSB'd the wall is, is because of the increased weight on this roof. So the back is OSB'd, the front is OSB'd, we've got a full sandwich wall there. It'll increase the strength of the wall and also take the weight of the flitch beams as well. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to show you the flitch beams if David just follows me around. Um, these are the timbers, they're 5x2, they're already cut to size, um, they're C16, so what we've done, Josh has cut these to size now, what we're going to do, we're going to have a double timber bolted, then we're going to have a flitch beam, then we're going to have a double timber bolted, then a flitch beam, and so on. John is cutting the steel plates over here, the steel plates will get sandwiched in between the timber, um, it's 10 mil thick, it's 100 mil wide, he's using the um, evolution saw there to drill through. What we'll do then, we'll sandwich them in between the 5v2s. And I'm going to show you how we're going to build them as well. So we're going to fix this OSB to the wall with, with the PAS load. And we're going to use 63mm nails, put a load of them in there. And of course, that's going to give it more rigidity. These props are in because it's six metres long. So the wall's still got a wobble on it till the roof has gone in. But once the roof's on and we're happy with that, these props will then come out. So like I say, this OSB is being cut to size already. I'm just going to drop that in there. I've already pre-marked where the timbers are, so we're literally just going to not use that. Will you throw us that pass load, please, Josh? Gas has gone in that, baby. Thanks, Josh. So we're going to put a load of 63mm nails in there. That'll increase the strength of that wall and take the weight of the flitch beams and the roof so that'll all get nailed up and then i'll show you how we're going to make the flitch beams and i'll show you how i'm going to make the double timbers as well right flitch beams so your flitch beam is basically two bits of timber with a piece of steel sandwiched in between this is one we've just made i'm going to now show you how to make it as well so the steel plate that goes inside it's 10 mil thick it's 100 mil wide um obviously the beam is this particular beam's 120 wide it's 5 by 2 so what we've done, we've dropped the steel down. Let me flip that over to this side. There we go. We've dropped the steel down so it's flush with one side. Um, John's pre-drilled the steel, um, which I've just showed you, and he staggered the bolts up and down like that all the way along. Approximately 400 centres. We're using these coach bolts to bolt it together. Um, they're longer than what we need, but it's all the adding stock, so we're having to grind them down as well. So basically, that's that. It, that now will add added strength to that 5 by 2 um, You've now got... A lot more strength in that, I don't know what the calculation is, but that, that will easily span over five me, um, over four metres for us now. So we're gonna have we're gonna have a double one which I'm gonna show you how we make as well. We're gonna have a flitch beam, double flitch, double flitch, all the way across, and obviously that strength in there is a lot better than what it was previously for that size timber. And we are using that size timber because it's permitted development, isn't it, as you all know. So what's going to happen now, me and John are going to show you how we're going to make these. Basically, what we'll do, we've got our first piece of timber down. We've pre-drilled the steel. We've laid the steel on top where it's going to go in place. What I'm going to do then, I'm going to go along, I'm going to drill all the holes through with a 10 mil drill bit. We're then going to offer another piece of timber up on the top. John's going to hold it square with that. I am then going to drill from the bottom side through the already pre-drilled hole, through the steel and out through the new piece of timber. And then John will hammer a bolt through. We'll flip it over. We'll whiz the nuts down. We'll grind them off. We'll whiz them down a little bit more. And then that will be your flitch beam. So we're going to show you how we're going to do one of them now. Right there. So what I'm going to do basically is just keep this steel in the position that we want it. And then going down with this 10 mil drill bit, I'm going to drill them holes through that timber. John's now getting his next piece of timber ready to go up on top. And what we want now is the steel to stay in position. It's heavy, so there's a, you know it's not going to really move about anywhere. So that there is our 11 holes drilled. All right, John. John's now going to offer it up there. I'm going to get it to right length here. I'm good, John. You good? Right, so what's going to happen now, we're going to keep it flush with that timber there. 
John's going to get his square out to keep it flush. Now I'm going to locate the hole. Are you good, John? Perfect. David, do you want to come in and get a bit of detail Hold on him, mate? Left shoulder, David. Right, follow him there, because we're going to go that way, David. Right, so John's used his square. John, just show me square again, mate. He's using his square to get the bottom as flush. I'm then going to drill through. He's then going to drive a bolt through there. That will hold that in place. What's going to happen now, when I get a little further down, are you good, John? When I get a little further down, if there's any like deviation in the timber, if one's cooked one way and the other's cooked the other way, John's going to then push them into place so that they're pre you know, pretty much flush with each other. Are we good, John? Like that, he's having to force that one across. But of course, because I'm drilling the 10mm hole and it's an M10 bolt, that will hold that tight in place. So we're going to whisk straight down there like that. That that steel one pull him across from the other side. Do you want Ethan to go on end, John? He might, I'm sorry, he might, I'll put it in there, that might go. That might go on how much it's not it's sticking out, mate, I can feel it. it. Just give it a miss with the hammer. Hit it with your hammer. Hit the steel. Move it on there. That's perfect. Right. Yeah. Right, so. Obviously that's moved a little bit. John's just rectified that now. He's sent it across. Perfect. Ethan, just get to the end of this timber. You'll see in a minute. John will want it pulling. I don't know if John, if there. Can you look down there? Look, Davy. You see how the timbers are in line with each other. Watch out, way, Ethan. You see how the timbers are in line with each other there. So what will happen now is as John's pulling these, Ethan will move them for him. Tap on that one. Oh, that's it. Has he just moved it? Yeah, yeah. Perfect. There's obviously timber being timber, it's not always as straight as what it could be. Um, but this will rectify that issue and make them dead straight as well. Pull the timber a little bit over to there, Ethan. That way. Look that at John. Way. There, that way, that's it. Yeah, that's it. Don't worry about what you're looking at there, Ethan. Just look at John and he'll oh, tell you which way he's going. To me, Ethan, that top timber. That's it. John. Right, so what we'll now, we'll rotate this beam over. John will now go down, um, he'll put the washer and nut on. And like I said, this is, these bolts they had, it's all they had in stock, so they are longer than what we required, but we're going to whip them off with the angle grinder when we're done. Got sticking on it, John. See there, what's happened? Look, the, the bolt is longer than the my socket. Um, like I said, it's all they had in stock at the time. So we're just going to have to make do. Well, what we'll do now, we'll whip that, the rest of the bolt off with the grinder, and I'll put that nut down a little further. Right. So what I'll do. Um, for us grinder, someone grinder. Glasses, David. They mine anywhere. Right, so like I said, the bolt is too big, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna grind that off. And then I'm gonna zip it down a little bit more, just to get it nice and tight. And unfortunately, I'm gonna have to grind it again. And the reason why I've ground it again is because when we insulate that, we, we want as little sticking out as possible because it's going to catch the insulation and make um, fitting the insulation more difficult than what it needs to be. So that basically will be your flitch beam. 
that's easy enough. Um, loads of strength in them now. I think, um, I don't know if we can actually swing off this one we've put up and see how much deviation. How much do you weigh, John? 15, nearly 16 stone. John weighs nearly 16 stone. I'm probably 12 and a half now. John, stand back, David. So I don't know if you can actually see the beam. Are you there, John? Yeah. Right, so there's two of us swinging off there now. And I, I did see it move fractionally, but it's not much. Um, so that's your added strength in there. We're also going to double, double up a timber as well, and I'm sure you're going to. I'll show you how we're going to do that. Right. So that's um, that's the flitch beam, and then that's the double timber beam we're putting together as well. I'm going to show you how we're going to make them as well. Um, I don't know, Josh, um, David. Go right to the end and look down this timber there. Just put the camera right on the corner there. Um, I mean, that one there is relatively straight, but you can see this one, I'm flush at the end, I'm flush at David's end, and it's bored out at this end. So what we're going to do, we're going to straighten both of them up, and I'm going to show you how we're going to do it. Um, so I'm going to get a couple of nails in that end there, and then Josh at that end, he's either going to pull it left or right to help me to straighten it. Uh, to me, Josh. A bit more to you. To you, mate. And I'm going to work my way down just doing that. To you, Josh. To you, to you, to you. To you. To you, to you. He's having to, to me, Josh. He's having to, to you. He's having to pull it quite a lot because obviously that bottom one was quite twisted. To me, Josh. Um, as I get towards him now, we'll be able to see it anyway, so I won't need to tell him um, which way to go. And what I'm going to do then? I'm going to go down with the 10 mil drill bit, just like we did before through the steel. Josh is going to follow me behind. And he's going to drive bolts into it. Like I previously said, um, the bolts are too big, so we're just going to have to cut them down. It's just one of them things. That's all they had in stock at the time. I'm approximately every 400, give or take. Um, we found that these are structurally stronger enough for the application that we're using them on so he's going to carry on with them now the recorch bolt 10 mil m10 bolt then flip it over um, You good? Right, he's going to go down with washers now. I'll follow behind and then he'll jump on um, the impact driver after that with socket in. <laughs> like I said a few times, these bolts are way longer than what we need. So the socket's not deep enough what we've got. Um, obviously, we'll get a deeper one, if, but we don't normally get this length of bolt. So what he'll do, we'll wind them down as far as he can. We'll grind off the top of the bolt and then we'll wind it down until it's compressed sufficiently. Like I said, this roof is um, it's about 4.1. So because we're limited with the timber we can use, we found structurally this is the best option to span that distance. Um, we don't need to put a flitch beam every one. It's a flitch beam every other one is more than sufficient. Um, as you see, me and John stringing off it there was enough to not cause any deviation in the timber and, and probably a 30, 30 stone between us both. Um, so he's wound them down as far as he can. What I'll do now, I'll just grind one off. I'll show you what's going to happen now. He'll go back now and he'll screw that down. He'll... Sorry, Josh. There you go. Um, what he'll do, he's wound it down now, proper tighten that up. So what I'm going to do, I'm now going to cut off that as well. Um, simply because what will happen now, when we put the insulation in, it's only going to catch on that and it'll just glide past that anyway. Um, obviously, if you had the right size nuts, that wouldn't be an issue. So there you go. You've got your flitch beam, you've got your double timber, so we'll go flitch, double, flitch, double, flitch, double, all the way across, and that will be sufficient for this size roof. So that's your flitch beams. 
Um, they're insulating the front wall now. What they're gonna do, they're gonna drop some sound block on that and we'll OSB the front wall as well because the front and the back wall, that's what carries all the weight. Um, and obviously when it's OSB on both sides, you've got extra strength in the wall as well. Right, that's this roof complete, um, apart from the noggings, because I ain't got enough timber, so... Um, we put a single one in there, obviously that's braced off the wall, so single's fine over that distance because you've got full support in the wall. And then like I said before, we've got flitch, double flitch, double flitch, all the way down to the end of the building. The internal's just over about 4.1, so there's plenty enough strength on there. I've showed you how strong they are, I've showed you how we make them as well. Um, what we'll do tomorrow now, we're going to get tarpaulin over this because it's looking like rain, but tomorrow we'll get three rows of noggings in straight down the centre. Um, we'll get it boarded and we'll get the rubber over as well because we've got the rubber. John, will you make sure that rubber comes in as well, please? Yeah, it? It's just on, on the Kingspan over there. Um, and then that, that will be the room sealed. Um, I've showed you the walls as well. So it's OSB on the outside, 50 mil insulation. Then we've got sound block and then we've got OSB on the inside. So we've got a thick, solid wall there, structurally sound, which will take the extra weight that we've applied on, that we've um, put on top with this roof as well, please.